A nearly record number of 10 million migrants have crossed into the U.S. since President Joe Biden took office. That's according to NBC News. His new executive order this week blocks migrants from seeking asylum at the U.S.-Mexico border. So this comes as illegal crossings surge past 2,500 a day. We want to take an in-depth look now at this policy shift regarding a critical election year issue. So let's bring in Austin-based immigration lawyer Kate Lincoln Goldfish. Kate, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So this measure we know took effect immediately. How is it really playing out, though, on the ground? You know, the reality is that this measure is not that different from what has been happening on the ground. We, ever since the closure of the border under Title 42, even though it's been lifted, for the most part, asylum seekers who are apprehended at the border have not, by and large, been processed in or allowed to seek asylum. And that is one of the main contributing factors to the numbers that we see, because we went from an era where we had regular processing of asylum seekers to one where we don't now. And as you might imagine, the migrants are still in danger, they still struggle, and the problem persists, even though we might have policies in place like the one that was announced yesterday. And Kate, I'm glad that you mentioned Title 42 because we know this is just the latest in a series of measures under the Biden and Trump administrations. And some say that those haven't really been successful. We haven't seen the lasting impacts. How will this be different if it will be? It won't. I mean, I would argue the opposite, that these sort of spots, you know, changing policies day after day, uh, only go to create more chaos and confusion along the border. It actually drives the cartels to the to the border because they prey upon vulnerable migrants. And the overall solution to this problem is immigration reform passed by Congress that allows ways for people to come and immigrate to the U.S. and work legally, which is needed by our economy, and to get back to an era where there is an orderly and predictable, reliable mechanism for screening asylum seekers. And we haven't had that in place now for over four years, and the, the problem is going to remain until we resolve it from a rational, practical perspective. But instead, this hot button issue keeps, you know, tossed, being tossed around by politicians because it's a big motivator for a lot of voters. And unfortunately, the problem is only going to worsen until we finally hold our leaders accountable and say, you know what, we actually need immigration reform and humanitarian process for asylum seekers. And only that is going to calm things down at the border. Okay. And are you hearing of any legal challenges to this policy? Yes, the ACLU has already announced publicly that they intend to bring suit. In fact, our asylum statute that was passed by Congress over 40 years ago says that an applicant for asylum has to be inside the United States. But when we don't process people at the border, we leave them with no choice other than to enter without inspection. And so this is in direct violation of the statute that Congress passed. And so even, even though it's an executive order under President Biden, we will see a lawsuit against it and, and likely an injunction because the same thing happened under the Trump administration. Okay, and we know that there was a historic election recently in Mexico. Any indication how the newly elected president of Mexico will, will handle this and work with the U.S.? You know, I think that that's still up in the air, at least from the public eye. We we don't really know. Mexico does have limits daily of the number of people that they will accept from other countries being returned back to Mexico. That's likely to stay static. And so I think, you know, we'll all just have to wait and see how this plays out. But the reality on the ground probably isn't going to shift all that much for migrants. In my opinion, this is much more of a politically motivated proclamation to send a message in an election year when there's so much political pressure on the immigration issue. And it's really unfortunate because it doesn't solve anything for any of us. Okay, Kate Lincoln Goldfinch, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. First Warning Weather with Jim Spencer. Well, just one day removed from uh, rain showers that cooled us down, thunderstorms in our eastern counties to almost a cloud-free sky over our